of Don Mattingly's Dodgers. Even with first inning back-to-back -back doubles by Jimmy Rollins and Yasiel Puig and two-run home runs by Justin Turner and Jimmy Rollins. The outcome of last night's game in doubt until the eighth. Alex Wood in his fifth and best start with the Dodgers came out of the game sooner than he would have liked. And then it was up to the bullpen to cobble together the final 10 outs. The biggest came with the bases loaded and two out in the eighth inning. Tying run at the plate, Luis Avila threw a 2-2 breaking ball to Jay Bruce. He was done and so was the losing streak. Tonight, the first place Dodgers go for their first winning streak in more than a week. It's a beautiful night for baseball and live from the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. Sportsnet LA presents the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Cincinnati Reds in game two of this three game series. Hi again, everybody. Charlie Steiner, Oral Hershiser, Nomar's at the Little League World Series. Dodgers finally entered that losing streak last night, picked up a game on San Francisco. And if the Dodgers play tonight as they did last night, looks like they may be headed finally in the right direction. They should play like they did last night. It was a team win. We went over what they needed to do. Every facet of the game needs to function, and it starts at the mound. And last night, Alex Wood was outstanding. Five and two thirds of four hit ball. He was on top of the game, had the double play working to get him out of jams. But after that, your defense can help you get out of jams. And boy, did they. Justin Turner on this play to Adrian Gonzalez. That saved a rally building. And then the offense. Twos were wild. Doubles and two run homers produced the offense. And then the 24th save from Kenley Jansen finished it off and broke the losing streak. Brett Anderson beat the Reds 11 days ago, and tonight he is in search of his eighth win of the year. On deck, a report from the field from Milano Rizzo. Dodgers and Reds are getting ready to play.
Casper. We are at the Great American Ballpark for the second game of this three-game series. And our closed captioning tonight is brought to you by First Five California. Talk, read, sing. It changes everything. And his play begins tonight. The Dodgers two and a half in front of the Giants. They are hosting the Cubs later on. Kyle Hendricks and uh, Jake Peavy. Arizona six and a half back San Diego. Seven and a half back Colorado. 18 off the pace. Here's the Honda lineup put together by Don Mattingly with Rollins and Puig and Gonzalez. Justin Turner. Scott Van Slyke is in left. Chase Utley at second base. A.J. Ellis behind the plate again. Grandall's getting better, likely to play tomorrow. Kike Hernandez remains red hot at center field. Fred Anderson pitching and batting ninth against 24-year-old David Holmberg, making his sixth start. The Dodgers saw him 11 days ago. Making his 14th appearance in the big leagues. And the first pitch to Rollins is a strike. The Dodgers roughed him up in his last outing. Three home runs by the Dodgers. Puig, Turner, and Kiki Hernandez. One and one to Jimmy Rollins at 225. 13 home runs, 41 runs batted in. Holmberg in 25 innings has surrendered seven home runs. He can be had. Typical pitch mix with the fastball slider curveball change. What is not typical is... He's not up to big league average fastball. He averages only around 88 miles an hour with the fastball, so he has to be pinpoint. Quig on deck, and Rollins wraps it foul. So it's three and two. Rollins last night led off the game with a double. He would walk and also hit a 422-foot home run into the right field stands. And a fly ball. Lazily hit. In the left center, and that's Yvonne De Jesus, a one-time Dodger. So we're underway defensively for the Reds tonight. It'll be De Jesus, Bourgeois, and Bruce in the outfield. Billy Hamilton remains sideline. Frazier, Suarez, Phillips, and Votto. Brian Pena behind the plate, catching for David Holmberg. He has struck out 14. He has walked 14. Hitters are batting 309 against him, so the numbers suggest the Dodgers should have a good night against him. As they did 11 days ago, as Puig fouls it back, it's nothing in one. Puig last night, a double in five at bats. Takes inside. Puig now riding an eight game hitting streak. Watching Holmberg's mechanics and his body type. Tall lefty. Looks a little bit like Greg Swindell. Straight fastball. Doesn't throw quite as hard as Greg did. Outside. Usually a lefty at 88 miles an hour has got some sink. Like Brett Anderson on our side. Holmberg's fastball is pretty straight. Now 3-1 and one to Puig. In two plus innings against the Dodgers on the 15th. We could go this past Saturday. Seven runs and five base hits and three home runs surrendered. And Quig pops it up into short right field. Jay Bruce, two out. And that will bring up Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez last night, double, hit by a pitch in four plate appearances, scored a run. In 26 career games at the Great American Ballpark, Adrian Gonzalez, 336 with nine home runs and 22 runs batted in. Outside corner for a strike. Not quite a full shift for Gonzalez, but they certainly play him to pull in the infield. And it's nothing in two. Two out, nobody on. Adrian will have a tendency to pull the ball in the air a lot more because he will open his swing up. One and two. Gonzalez had a base hit against Holmberg back on the 15th. 
again Holmberg wasn't around for very long just two plus innings. The 2 2. Grounded to second base couple of steps to his right Phillips picks it up throws him out and Holmberg makes it look easy. Dodgers go down quietly Brett Anderson getting ready for his 25th start of the year in search of his eighth win Bourgeois Suarez and Votto to bat for Cincinnati. Twenty seven and a half games behind the first place St. Louis Cardinals. It's been a rugged year for Brian Price in his second season as the manager of the Reds. And here's the lineup he has put together courtesy of Honda. Bourgeois in center, Suarez at short, and Joey Votto, who gets on base almost all the time. Brandon Phillips in the cleanup spot. Todd Frazier's turned it around over the past couple of weeks. Jay Bruce in right. De Jesus in left. Pena the catcher. Holmberg the pitcher. And here is Brett Anderson, seven up, eight down, an ERA of three and a half. Brett Anderson needs to get the ground ball pitch going, which he's number one in the major leagues. When you're in this great American ballpark, the ball travels. It's kind of a bandbox, so you want the ball hit on the ground. He's got almost 67% of the balls hit off him are ground balls. The other side of the coin is he's given up 14 home runs this year. Four in his last three starts, and that really, those are coming from his curveball and his changeup. Inside. Slugging percentage against his curveball and his changeup against the curveball, 674, and against the changeup, 421. The slider is actually the most statistically the most effective pitch that he throws. Bourgeois speedster taking over for Hamilton, who's hurt. The ground ball to third, right into the glove of. Justin Turner. So it's Turner at third base and Jimmy Rollins at short. Chase Utley and Adrian Gonzalez on the right side of the infield with the lefty going tonight, Van Slyke in left. Kike Hernandez making his 12th start at center field. Puig is in right. A.J. Ellis behind the plate and Brett Anderson on the hill. Facing Eugenio Suarez. Who's done a nice job at shortstop. 303 with nine home runs, 35 runs batted in. Seems like there's been a vacancy sign at short in Cincinnati since Brian or Barry Larkin retired. Between 1970 and 2004, the Reds had basically two shortstops. Davey Concepcion. And uh, Barry Larkin. That's Utley, two out. Since the retirement of Larkin, the Reds have used 31 different shortstops. Dodgers have used quite a few. It's a long way from Garvey and Lopes. Now 
here is uh, Joey Votto. Votto has, as we mentioned, he's on base all the time. His 448 on base percent is second highest in the National League with 106 walks. And Votto walked three times last night. That's the most walks of any hitter in Major League Baseball. Seventh in the league with 24 home runs. So he has regained some of the power that seemingly he had lost the last couple of years. Like others that have nagging injuries, especially when you have leg problems, you can lose your power, you lose your base. And I don't care what clinic you go to that is as a big league teacher, whether they're teaching pitching or hitting, they're going to start from the ground up. So many of the youngsters out there, they think, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a good hitter because I have a really fast bat or I'm going to really be a good pitcher because I can throw the ball hard and they're they're using just their hands and their arms. But the way you do it consistently and at a much better level, higher level is with your legs. And Fado takes a call third strike. So a one, two, three inning for Brian Anderson. Fado down on strikes. The Reds are down in order. Turner, Van Slyke, and Utley will bat for the Dodgers in the second. A data strong fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T Mobile. Justin Turner, once a Cincinnati Red, he was uh, drafted in 2006 by the Reds and on to Baltimore and New York, and of course now with the Dodgers hitting 303. With career highs in home runs and RBIs, 15 home runs, 51 runs batted in. He has shown how strong he can be and really refined his mechanics and the power has come with it. It took him 1,129 at bats to hit his first 15 home runs and now in 97 games and 290 at bats 15 more. So he's got career highs in home runs and RBIs. At a Cal State Fullerton. 340 last year, 303 this year, although he's been struggling lately. Off to the right and out of play. Take a look at the power that Justin Turner has provided this year for the Dodgers and what counts it's been in. That first pitch he attacks. You see the four home runs and the batting average is up there too. Ahead in the count and even the count. So you really want to get ahead of him. That's the only time you get rid of the power. Line drive single into center field. Turner begins the second inning. And I will tell you that behind in the count, he will cut down his swing, and that's why there's only one home run in that category. But right here, a fastball up that he stays on top of, hits a line drive. Big leg kick, but 
as the leg kick comes down, the hands don't drop with it. So the hands stay up there, and you've got to get your hands above the ball because the barrel will drop slightly, and that's how you still hit a line drive. Now Van Slyke with a fly ball to center field. Bourgeois, a couple of steps out, now sprinting in, can't get it. It was off the end of the bat, and so Bourgeois was badly fooled. Van Slyke drops a single into short center, and the Dodgers are in business. This is the one that fools the outfielder, especially a big, tall, lanky guy like Van Slyke. Outstretched arms, looks like it could be a powerful swing, but it is not. And fortunately for the Dodgers, finds the outfield grass. First and second, nobody out, and Chase Utley coming up. So Holmberg, who retired the Dodgers in order on 16 pitches in the first, he's got his back to the wall as Utley steps in. Chase making his fifth start with the Dodgers. Last night, 0 for 4, struck out twice. And takes high and away. One ball and no strikes. A.J. Ellis is on deck. Todd Frazier pinched in at third. There's no way that Chase Utley's going to be bunning. Utley 2 for 17 since coming to the Dodgers. Both hits doubles. And it's two balls and no strikes. So Utley has come home. Boy, he's sure looking forward to the flight back to Los Angeles after the game tomorrow. The UCLA Bruin, who grew up a Dodger fan. So Friday night will be special for him. Hard ground ball foul pass, Davey Lopes. And it's two and one. It'll be a little different for him. He'll go into the stadium and make a left hand turn towards the home side dugout instead of the right hand turn over to where the Phillies used to dress, the visiting side. Where the home whites come Friday night on two and one. Phillips retreating. That'll be the infield fly rule. So that's the first out of the second inning. And A.J. Ellis coming up. Because Monty Grandall still has the uh, left shoulder issue. It's bruised. Could have played tonight. He's supposed to go tomorrow. In the meantime, Ellis... Yasmani has done well. Three home runs, ten runs batted in. It takes a strike, it's nothing in one. Hitting 302 is Ellis since the first of July. Dodgers with a threat. Hitting with runners in scoring positions been an issue on this trip. Inside. Last night the Dodgers were two for seven. Four for 33 with runners in scoring position on the road trip. One ball and two strikes to A.J. Ellis with Kike Hernandez on deck. AJ has been swinging the bat a lot better, getting a better load onto his back leg and being able to maintain that load until he wants to explode in the, when the ball's in the hitting area. He has a tendency sometimes when he's swinging to leak a little bit, but he's maintaining his load and hit the ball a lot harder. So you've got Turner leading off second and Van Slyke off first. One and two to AJ Ellis. You'll see another pitch. So the Dodgers back with you tomorrow morning. First pitch about 9.30 Pacific. Zach Granke and Anthony DiSclefani. Then homeward bound. Friday night, first pitch 7-10. Jason Hamill and Clayton Kershaw. Cubs send John Lester Saturday night against Matt Latos. And Jake Arrieta on Sunday against Alex Wood. Wood did a nice job last night. 
on one and two. Ellis takes inside two balls and two strikes. The Dodgers really needed Alex Wood to get off to a good start, and he went five and two thirds. Only four hits he gave up. Got a couple double play balls. Had some nice defense behind him. It was a huge win. It might only be worth one as far as 68 wins for the Dodgers, but emotionally it was worth a lot more. Put an end to that five game losing streak. The 2 2 Ellis slashes it foul. And with the Giants losing last night, Dodger lead is two and a half over San Francisco. And as we're rounding the turn and heading for home on the season, we start looking at the all important loss column. And the Giants have lost three more than the Dodgers have, and you can't get those back. Three and two to Ellis. And the pitch count beginning to mount for Holmberg. Last night, John Lamb was 50 pitches through two innings. And so his shelf life expired rather quickly. Three and two. Runners go back as Holmberg steps off the rubber. JT was getting frisky out there in the 3-2 count, looking like he wanted to go. Did a good job reading Holmberg's leg kick. Now let's see what they do on three and two. They're going. And it's low and inside ball four, and the Dodgers have the bases loaded. The runners going three, two, and AJ up there. That shows how far his swing has come. And he's always known he's had a great eye, but Don Mattingly trusting the fact that if it's a strike, he can make good contact. So here's Kike Hernandez after the walk to Ellis. AJ with 24 walks he has struck out as many times as he has walked 24 and 24 and here is Hernandez who has been red hot under the knees one ball and no strikes we've seen with these two left-handed young starters that came in the trade for Johnny Cueto the last couple of nights when men get on they get really gun shy Inside two balls and no strikes. They start hunting and pecking the corners instead of attacking the strike zone And that's a formula for disaster because you fall behind these hitters when you have no place to go You've got to use the middle of the plate now, and they know what speed is coming on 2 and 0 oh, I strike two and one Jeff Nelson the crew chief calling balls and strikes tonight Nelson in his 16th big league season at a st. Paul Kike Hernandez has reached base safely in 16 of his last 18 games, during which time he's hit 351 with a 413 on base percentage. So the Dodgers with a rally here in the second. And when they score first this year, they're 47 and 14. Big grip, foul tip, and it's two and two. Come up and you hit a routine solid fly ball with this swing. It's a grand slam. Kike, that's not a routine swing. One of three Dodgers that had home runs off of Holdberg in his last outing against the Dodgers. Puig. Turner, Puig, and Hernandez. Now the 2 2. Line pass. Phillips into right field for a hit. Here comes Turner. Van Slyke will be held at third. The bases are loaded. A run is in. An RBI single to right for Kiki Hernandez. And the Dodgers take a one to nothing lead. Fastball up and in. Swing real hard and miss it. Make an adjustment. Fastball ends up being away. Still in a hitter's count. And he does a good job of just putting a nice solid swing on. You see him kind of cut the swing off a little bit. And just kind of line it over there to right field. Completely different approach in that pitch. Two different hitters counts. Two different pitches. One base hit. Runners weren't sure whether the gold glove winning Brandon Phillips was going to reach that line drive. So it was station to station. And here is Brett Anderson has a couple of hits. Three RBIs and takes a strike. It's nothing in one. So the Dodgers draw first blood. Three hits and a walk. The bases are loaded. One in here in the second. And Holmberg about to throw his 41st pitch. 
Anderson swings and misses and it's nothing in two. Jimmy Rollins on deck. No balls, two strikes. David Holmberg, 24 years of age, 6'3", about 245. Remember the catcher Ryan Hannigan? Used to be here in Cincinnati, went on to the race. Part of a three-team deal. Holmberg came up in the Arizona organization. And now he's got the bases loaded with one out. Now bases loaded, two out, his first strikeout. Anderson down on strikes. Anderson's been to the plate this season 35 times, and that was the 26th time he was struck out. Jimmy Rollins stepping in. Rollins fly to left in his first at-bat. Jimmy Rollins with 13 home runs this year. Or as many as Hanley Ramirez had all of last year. Takes a ball, one ball and no strikes. So Jimmy now with 13 home runs and 41 runs batted in. Bases loaded and two out. Grounds it foul. Last night, Rollins in the sixth inning. Hit a long distance shot, 422 feet. And that's what 422 feet sounds like. Got on top of the plate, was looking to pull the hole at bat, got what he was looking for, and didn't miss it. Rollins has but two home runs from the right side, and 13 runs batted in. And he drills that one foul, and it's one and two. You get a sense in this at bat. Rollins is beginning to size up Holmberg. Off to a very slow start the first half of the year. Since the All Star break, Rollins beginning to heat it up. And down the stretch they come. One and two. Blocked nicely by Brian Pena behind the plate. Devin Mezzarocco, who was going to be the everyday catcher for the Reds, bad hip, done for the year. So it's been a combination of Pena and Tucker Barnhart, switch hitting catcher, who we saw last night. Van Slyke, Ellis, and Hernandez, the base runners, two and two. Now three and two. Jimmy's been swinging really well at the high fastballs. The home run last night was a high fastball from the left side. So far in this at bat, he's squared it up. It's been a couple of high pitches that have been inside. Red's trying to go down there in the dirt, but he's not chasing. Count is full, three and two. The runners will be off and running. Here they go. Here's the pitch. Drilled toward the left field corner and foul. So he's had three really solid swings against Holmberg. Holmberg is throwing the ball either down in the dirt or pretty much waist high. Jimmy's just a little quick with the trigger. Last night starter Lamb threw 50 in the first two innings. And this will be the 50th pitch for Holmberg. And the 34th of the second inning. Again on three and two. To third. Frazier picks it up and throws across the diamond. Rollins is done. So are the Dodgers. They come up with a run and three hits and leave three and will go to the bottom of the second. Fred Anderson has a one to nothing lead. Kike Hernandez on the RBI single.
Net LA is brought to you by the 2015 Jeep Cherokee with an EPA estimated 31 highway MPG. It's the perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com today. And by the new movie No Escape, now playing in theaters. So Fred Anderson, who retired the Reds in order in the first, needing but a dozen pitches, striking out Joey Votto along the way, begins the second facing Brandon Phillips. Phillips at 288, 10 home runs, 48 runs batted in. Phillips two for four last night. High and away, one ball and no strikes. Todd Frazier and Jay Bruce to follow. Count even at one and one. Phillips originally drafted by the Montreal Expos and on to Cleveland and of course had a great career in Cincinnati and a fly ball to right. Quig is there and makes the catch. When Brett Anderson is going well, the ball is on the ground. That fly ball right there to Yasiel Puig is a rarity. Take a look at this list. Since 1987, the ground ball percentage, not only number one in the big leagues this year, but comparing him back to some years, he is right in the race with Brandon Webb and Derek Lowe and those ground ball artists. Frazier stepping in at 263. He takes a ball inside. Years ago, when Derek Lowe was with the Red Sox, came up with the Mariners, of course, as a, a reliever. And he would, like most sinker ball pitchers, give up a lot of hits. And he was okay with that. He said, my job is to keep the ball on the ground. The infielder's job is to keep it within the infield. So that's going to happen on occasion. But the odds are when I am right to Derek Lowe 10, 15, 20 years ago, it's going to uh, base hits are going to find their way through the holes, but my job is to keep the ball in the park. Exactly. But if the sinker gets up, there's a base hit in the left. And then it becomes flat and hittable. Now if the first one goes in the hole, the next one goes at somebody, you get two outs, and that'll be the plan here for Brett Anderson. This one right here down there below the kneecaps. Exactly what you want a right-handed hitter to do with a sinker away. If you're Brett Anderson, you want him to roll over it. Maybe you want a few more bounces, not three firmly hit, but still got it on the ground. So Todd Frazier's been hot lately. First 23 games after the All-Star break, couldn't buy a hit. 148. Last couple of weeks, he's hitting about 320. Frazier, of course, the home run derby champion this year in this very ballpark, beating out Jock Peterson. And Bruce loops a base hit into left center field. So now the Reds have first and second with one man out. It was Bruce who would be struck out last night in the pivotal moment of the game by Luis Avalon. Brett Anderson, they're coming fastball down and in. You see the ball up and over the middle of the plate. And that's one of those sinkers, those two seamers that's up, Charlie. Not good for a sinker ball pitcher to pitch there. And especially the way Jay Bruce has been swinging the bat against left-handed breaking balls. In an 0-1 count, I'm sure Brett doesn't want to make a mistake with the fastball. So Bruce struck out in that pivotal moment last night. Comes up with but his ninth hit in his last 77 at-bats. Last 20 games, Bruce barely hitting 100. But he bloops a single to center, and now Yvonne DeJesus steps in. Dodgers with a one to nothing lead. Look at it. DeJesus at 266 with four home runs and 16 runs batted in. Marlon Bird, of course, sent to San Francisco, and DeJesus getting the playing time now. Came up with the Dodgers, and he can play all over the field. His dad was quite a player. Nothing in two to Ivan De Jesus Jr. This ball is right there. Going away. Ended up throwing at the inside corner. 
Jesus Jr. didn't like the call, but maybe just because he saw the catcher set up away and the glove move so much. Just outside. One ball, two strikes. Brian Pena is on deck. The Astros won again today. They become an increasingly interesting team in the final five weeks of the season. And DeJesus down on strikes for Anderson, his second strikeout. Backdoor slider down and in to righties put people away. That one went for the outside corner with that slider. The fastball away before that kind of set it up. Hesitant swing by DeJesus Jr. Brings up Brian Pena, the catcher. Pena last night pinch hitting. Came close to his first home run of the year. 13 RBIs, 13 doubles, two on and two out. One ball and no strikes. So the Reds are playing out the string. 20 under 500, 27 and a half behind the Cardinals. With an eye already toward 2016. Runner goes to third and out at third base. Frazier gunned down by A.J. Ellis. The eighth would-be base dealer of the year. Caught by the arm of Ellis. No runs, one hit, one left, and one very good throw. one nothing Dodgers will go to the third. base attempt from Todd Frazier. AJ Ellis does a nice job clearing himself from the hitter Pena and Justin Turner. I'm sure neither one of them expected this, but you are ready if it happens and they got him by about six inches. Todd Frazier, he won the home run derby here in the All-Star game. But I'll tell you what, that doesn't give you permission to uh, to get thrown out at third, stealing a base at the bottom of your order. All of a sudden now you've got eight, nine next inning instead of possibly having your catcher drive you in and Keep the Dodgers on their heels. The Dodgers will take that gift. Well, the cardinal rule and cliche is you don't want to make the first out or the third out at third base. You're already in scoring position. So here comes Yasiel Puig to begin the third and the Dodgers with a one to nothing lead. It'll be Puig and Gonzalez and Justin Turner. 73 degrees, sun is setting here in southern Ohio. And call strike to Puig, who flied to right. Puig won for five last night, enters the game with a eight-game hitting streak, and he's tossed out. Nice play in the hole by 
Eugenio Suarez. That's the first out. On Tuesday, the Dodgers and the Giants and the first 40,000 fans in attendance receive a Justin Turner bobblehead brought to you by Security Benefit. For tickets, go to dodgers.com slash promotions. Adrian Gonzalez stepping in, and the aforementioned Turner is on deck. Gonzalez takes a breaking ball high and away. One ball and no strikes. Look at that. On the banks of the Ohio River. And a fly ball to right. Bruce drifting on back. And he's there. Two gone. This time of year can be hot and humid and oppressive. And last night, tonight, hints of early fall. And it has just been a beautiful day. And back with you tomorrow morning. First pitch a little past 9.30 Pacific. It is barbecue on the backyard patio weather. It's awesome. Turner single to center in his first at bat scored the only run. Two out in the top of the third, and he takes a strike. It's nothing in one. Cal State Fullerton, 2006, drafted by the Reds. So he was a Cincinnati Red. Then on to the Orioles, Mets, and the Dodgers. That is Oral mentioned. Until this year, he had a total of 15 career home runs in this season. He's at 15 home runs and 51 runs batted in a career season. Two and two. Hopped it up. Short right center. Bruce in front of Bourgeois at a nine pitch inning. One, two, three. The Dodgers go quietly. We'll go to the bottom of the third with Pena, Holmberg, and Bourgeois coming up. Third inning of work with a one to nothing lead here in the bottom half of the inning. Asmani Grandal figures to be back behind the plate tomorrow in the day game. He has been dealing with that shoulder soreness in his non throwing arm. He was, however, out there today working on some defensive drills. He says, It hasn't hurt me defensively. That's why he was out there today for the defensive sharpness. He said, Waist down, I feel great. Above the waist, about 75% dealing with that shoulder soreness. Now, he did say that it's actually been the fact that the other muscles have been over. Overcompensating. It basically started in his trap, went to his neck and his ribs. Feeling better, he should be back tomorrow, guys. Pena bounces it over the middle, and Rollins cuts it off and throws out Pena. One pitch, one out in the third. So Yasmani Grandal took a couple of foul tips off that left shoulder. 
played through it and didn't do particularly well, so they sat him down for a couple of days. And of course, he is having a career year in his first All Star season. Expected to be back in the lineup tomorrow. David Holmberg. Is one for seven. Throws left, bats right, and the count is one and one. Jason Bourgeois is on deck. One and two. Holmberg, seven at bats, four punch outs. And has been struck out on four pitches. The third strikeout of the game for Anderson. And the second out of the third. Dodgers had a quick nine pitch top of the third. And Brett Anderson is trying to answer right here. Well, he's needed five to get the first two outs. So you're saying he's got a chance. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bourgeois punts it off to the right. Foul, nothing in one. Jason Bourgeois bounced to third in his first at bat. Billy Hamilton on the shelf. He has a shoulder and not a good one. There he is. Hamilton, of course, leads the league in stolen bases. One of the loneliest feelings in the big leagues is when you're on the DL. Everybody thinks, oh, you're still part of the team. You're there, and you just you just don't feel the same. There's 25 guys that feel the sting of the win or the loss. And uh, just feel, even though you're there in body, the spirit is not the same. Three and one to Bourgeois from Houston. He's a speedster. Came up with the White Sox. And a cup of coffee with the Brewers. Houston, Kansas City, Tampa Bay, and his second season with the Reds. You're going to miss up. If you're a sinker baller. You better miss up and on the edge. On three and two, Rollins is going to have to hurry. Bourgeois runs very well, and he's out by a half a step. And the inning is over. Nothing across. Four in a row retired by Anderson. We will go to the fourth. Dodgers one to nothing. Van Slyke, Ugly, and Ellis coming up. Seventy-six. We'll be back with you first thing tomorrow morning. First pitch a little after 9.30 when Zach Greinke and Anthony DiSclefani will have it. After the game, the Dodgers fly home, get home around the dinner hour on the West Coast. Over the weekend on Friday, the Cubs, Hamels, Hamel, and Kershaw Saturday. Lester and Latos and Sunday is the ESPN game. Arietta is a legitimate Cy Young Award candidate against Alex Wood. 
Van Slyke single to center in his first at bat. No balls and a strike. And it's now nothing and two. Van Slyke had bottomed out for a time. And with the base hit, has lifted his average to 242. One ball and two strikes. So with the lefty Holmberg getting the start tonight, Crawford and Ethier are watching. So to Jock Peterson. So the right-handed hitting Van Slyke with Utley on deck and Ellis to follow. Two and two to Scott Van Slyke. Holmberg, he is a fast worker. Boy, he gets right on there. If he gets in a rhythm, he can go six, seven seconds between pitches. Inside and low, three and two. Catching the ball, backpedaling to the rubber. Now they want to change the ball, so that slows him down because it hit the dirt. He's ready to go. Holmberg threw 50 pitches in the first two innings, but needed only nine to retire the Dodgers in the third. Well hit to center field. Bourgeois going back, way back. And it is gone, a home run. Scott Van Slyke with his fifth home run of the year, and the Dodgers take a two to nothing lead. The Dodgers lead the National League now with 151 home runs. Scott Van Slyke in his first at bat fooled the center fielder with a full swing blooper for a base hit. Well, this one you don't need to be fooled on. He barrels it up and spanks it. No more room. Chase Utley checks his swing, and so Van Slyke now with five home runs and 22 runs batted in at his first home run in two months. Utley popped to second with first and second, and nobody out at his first at bat back in the second inning. Dodgers up two. Anderson has done well through the first three. So Brett Anderson has a two-run lead to work with. Anderson has struck out three through the first three innings. Yeah, coming into Cincinnati is kind of a formula for disaster as far as if you think about the rotation. When you've just gotten by Clayton Kershaw and Zach Greinke and you're still on a five-game losing streak. And all of a sudden... Alex Wood steps up, goes five and two thirds, four hits. Now here, Brett Anderson doing the job. He's gone three and only given up two hits. Anderson talking to that other left-hander. Any advice Clayton gives him, if it's about pitching and stuff, he needs to take it with a grain of salt. Doesn't have quite the tools that Clayton has. It's kind of like when. Different people in our organization over the years have talked to Sandy Koufax about pitching. It's mostly about leverage and mechanics, not about pitch selection always. Two and two to Chase Utley. Up and in, three and two. The Van Slyke home run traveled 392 feet. First home run in two months. Now the three two to Utley. To the knee. Second walk given up by Holmberg. The Dodgers have really had Holmberg on the ropes a couple innings. The second inning with the bases loaded situation could only score one with three hits. Ron Renneke, really one of his first big decisions since taking over for Lorenzo Bundy at third base, holding up the runner to keep the inning in order. Dodgers for the pitch count of Holmberg and the number of hits they have to only have two runs. It's that's a low total. AJ Ellis, who walked in his first at bat, takes a strike. Holmberg couldn't get out of the third inning when the Dodgers faced him 11 days ago back at Dodger Stadium. Now trailing two to nothing. AJ Ellis tossed to first base and Utley. Who has stolen three bases this year? None with the Dodgers as yet. Back easily, being held on by Joey Votto. Kike Hernandez on deck. We were.
talking about it in uh, Houston watching Utley and now how he's able to move of course missed a lot of time in Philadelphia with the bad ankle but watching him run now and just watching him scamper off first base as the pitch was thrown he appears to be running with great ease and a fly ball to center field there goes Bourgeois back he's back and it is gone a home run for AJ Ellis a two run shot is fourth of the year second of the inning the Dodgers have tattooed Holmberg for five home runs in his two outings. And the Dodgers now take a four to nothing lead. They hit three against him at Dodger Stadium 11 days ago. Turner, Puig, and Hernandez hit them. And Ellis hits this one out. This will be your Morongo slow mo cam replay here first at real speed. Short term reminder of the home run, the three run job. AJ hit in the eighth in Oakland, put the Dodgers on top before a bad memory happened. And that one right there, he has slightly opened up his stance a little bit, and also that load on that back leg that he is really starting to show some power. Kike Hernandez, two balls and a strike. So Ellis. Plenty of reason to smile. And the ground ball up the middle into center field for a base hit for Kike Hernandez, who's two for two. Well, the way AJ Ellis' season was going, Charlie, it really looked like any future employment was going to be because of his defense and his ability to manage the pitching staff. But now, the way he has shown how he can hit here in the last month or so and his mechanics change the scouts will notice that the Dodgers of course notice that and AJ has really made himself into a full all around catcher now with both sides of the ball. We know he's an expert at calling games and preparing a pitching staff for the defensive side but that smile is all about wow I'm a complete player. Jeff Pico the pitching coach on the hill trying to settle the nerves of David Holmberg. While they are out there on the hill out in the red bullpen is Pedro Villarreal. Well, Holmberg couldn't get out of the third inning against the Dodgers last week. He hasn't retired a batter here in the fourth tonight. Brett Anderson has nine sacrifice bunts this year and that's what he's assigned to do here. Outside and low and Brian Pena playing a little cat and mouse. With Kike Hernandez, he wasn't biting on the cheese. Well, Kike looking for a big secondary lead because Brett Anderson is giving away the bunt, and everybody knows he's going to bunt, so a lot of charging. So Brian Anderson trying to look like that one gets away from him, then getting ready to throw. Two balls and no strikes, and Anderson takes a close shave on that red beard. Watch your lips right here. Brett, get in there and get ready. And like somebody put the scuffed ball into the machine in the cage and it starts coming at you. you stay loose. 2 0 to Brett Anderson. That's a dangerous one. That's right down where his pitching hand was. He didn't react to that one like he saw it very well because the last one was right at his head. So he's trying to pick up the ball and watch. See the pit left pitching hand of Brett. And he gets Ooh. it out of the way just in time. He's the not index finger. Not picking up the ball real way well from Holmberg and that one was right by. That, he just avoided danger right there. That's why you don't wrap your hand around the bat when you're bunting. Get it behind the bat. Rollins on deck. Two and one to Anderson. Now three and one. So Holmberg's already walked two. Given up four runs and six hits, couple of home runs, and 83 pitches. His shelf life appears to be rapidly expiring. Bunted in the air. A little higher, and he might have had himself a single. Todd Frazier was charging so close that balls up in the air to go over his head. 
I like the fact that your third baseman's being aggressive, but boy, it's close. See how close he's getting? Pops that up a little higher. <laughs> it's base hit. It might have been ball four anyway. So one out, one on, and three in here in the fourth. Rollins 0 for 2. Takes inside and low one ball and no strikes. Rollins, while it says in the scorebook, he bounced to third in his last at bat in the second. He hit three screamers foul. Looked like he was beginning to size up Holmberg. Let's see how this at bat plays out. Not particularly well. Throw to second base and out at second base. Fernandez very close play. Second base umpire Chris Cuccioni there. And there's two out. Little flip from Suarez and it's got some arc to it. So Kike looks like he is going to have a chance to get in there. Any higher, he might have been safe. Now two out and Puig coming up. Yasiel has flied to right and bounced to short. At 251 with 10 home runs and 36 runs batted in. 11 days ago, we get a home run off Holmberg. Inside and low, one ball and no strikes. In fact, that was the last home run that Puig hit. One ball, no strikes. One ball and one strike. Padres four to nothing, top half of the third in Washington. Mets three to nothing. Over the Phillies in the bottom half of the third in Philadelphia. Into center field, Bourgeois going back. Way back, and it's a home run for Yasiel Puig. He hit his 10th against Holmberg 11 days ago. He hits his 11th home run tonight. It is the third home run of the inning. A two-run shot for Yasiel Puig. And the Dodgers take a 6 to nothing lead. Double in his first at bat yesterday. A ball that went off the wall in left field. This one is not going off of any wall, even if it's to center field. He just powders it. Yasiel knew he had it right away. Included the little bat flip right there. Stays on top of it. Now five Dodgers in this starting lineup have home runs off of Holmberg. And one has two of them. That guy right there with that smile. Holmberg's night is done. Against the Dodgers back at Dodger Stadium. He couldn't finish the third inning tonight in Cincinnati, unable to finish the fourth. Six nothing Dodgers.
six runs seven hits. One strikeout two walks three home runs. Entered the game with an ERA of six and a half and leaves the game with an ERA of seven and two thirds. And in the last two starts against the Dodgers, he served up a half dozen home runs. Jeff Nelson. I imagine he probably wants the uh, the strings more closely attached to the glove so as to not to interfere with the batter's eye. As soon as Villarreal came out and started warming up, the crew chief came out and said, You know, we need a little Betsy Ross here. And there are more strings attached. That's a lot of them that are really long. That's a reputation that has grown around the league for Villarreal, and all of a sudden now they're going to blow the whistle on him. It's like he got caught by the school principal. Strings, what strings? So the Dodgers with three home runs tonight. They lead the National League with 153. Five runs here in the fourth. Dodgers are sitting pretty. As Adrian Gonzalez steps into the batter's box. 0 for 2 tonight. He's the eighth batter of the inning. And he lines one into left field, and Jesus is there. And that will end the inning. But the Dodgers flex their muscles in the fourth. Van Slight, 392 feet. A.J. Ellis, 413 feet. And Yasiel Puig, 413 feet of his own. Three home runs for the Dodgers. They score five in the fourth and lead six to nothing. And Wednesday and be sure to get your tickets tonight show up to the stadium wearing your Dodger blue all you have to do is visit Dodgers.com slash tickets so Anderson with a fat lead to work with delivers outside in the one ball and no strikes to a Eugenio Suarez with Joey Votto and Brandon Phillips to follow and it's two balls and no strikes Anderson has struck out three. Given up a couple of hits, hasn't walked anybody. And there's a strike. And it's two and one. Here's a two-one. Inside and low three balls and a strike. 
So the Dodgers during their five game losing streak beaten from stem to stern outscored 19 to 9. Here's a 3 1. A lead off walk to Suarez. So they've come to Cincinnati for a little relaxation. They go to the spa. Great American ballpark and come up with 11 runs in 13 innings. They've come for a little rejuvenation. It sure has turned around the losing streak and been a feeling tonight the offense would really break out. I think even yesterday when they were able to get the five runs, it loosened the ball club up. But as soon as the victory was under their belt, Joey Votto takes outside and low one ball, no strikes. And so after scoring five in the top half of the fourth, Anderson walks the first batter and falls behind Votto. Relaxed bat is an accurate bat. A relaxed pitcher with a lot of runs, not quite as accurate. Let's get focused back in. AJ Ellis is telling him. Votto struck out in his first at bat. Anderson has struck out three, hasn't walked anybody. Outside corner for a strike. But the Avalon strikeout of Bruce last night in the eighth inning. When the Dodgers were on the ropes. The bullpen delivered in a big way. The Dodgers felt a whole lot better about themselves than they had 24 hours earlier. It's a good pitch to get called for a strike. The number one leader in the 2 1 count, active leaders in average, is Joey Votto at 494. Instead of it being 2 and 1 right now, where he's number one, it's 1 and 2. One ball and two strikes. Call strike three inside corner. That was a beauty. Fastball and down goes Votto. Second time he's gone down and strikes, and it's the fourth strikeout of the game for Anderson. Votto limbos a little bit because he thinks that ball is going to come in and tail in like it sinks, but it hangs on to the edge right there. He'll go back and check the video. And see the Jeff Nelson made the right call. Now Brandon Phillips stepping in. So he's going to go back to the video room and have a postmortem. Phillips fly to right in his first at bat. Very rarely will you write in your scorebook a backwards K for Joey Votto. And even more rare, two in a row looking. One out, one on in the fourth. Dodgers with three home runs in the fourth inning. Leading it six to nothing. Frazier on deck. Anderson about to throw his 49th pitch. Suarez leading off first. And that's a foul ball. I was reading a piece the other day on counts. And some pitchers will tell you. First pitch is the most important. Others will tell you the 1 1 pitch is the most important, and the difference between 2 and 1 and 1 and 2. And as a pitcher and as successful as you were, what was the most important pitch to you? The one I was about to throw. <laughs> but, but I would say, in that count, I would say uh, the, the two most are the strike one and 1 1. Yeah. Because there's such a huge difference between a 2 1 count and a 1 2 count. You get to a 1 2 count. After the 1-1, one, one, you uh, you have three pitches really to make look like strikes and end up balls if you want, or make look like they're down the middle and get them to the edge. Well, here's the one-two instead of toss to first base. But that first pitch strike two is is really important. And I think in today's day and age, with so many people trying to work the pitch count, and our partner Nomar Garcia Parra, as much as he attacked the first pitch. I think you can weed those guys out real easy nowadays because there's just so many of them that take that first pitch. But you can get ahead that 0 and 1, and it's a lot easier to get you know past the 1 1 count with one strike. Well, as a pitcher, then on 1 and 2, you're really playing with house money. Oh, for sure. And even on 2 and 2, I feel like I am because the 1 2 pitch, I see where I've thrown it. It's hopefully been a pitcher's pitch. I didn't make a mistake on it, and now I have a lot of different places to go. Into Utley's glove, and there'll be no throw to first. 
Phillips lines out. But essentially then. From the psychological slash intellectual point of view of a pitcher. There's not a whole lot of difference then between one and two and two and two because you still have another pitch to play with that yeah. that second strike. Right. And, and and the thing I really love about, you know, as you get into a count and if you're executing your pitches and you're confident about your execution, you've given the hitter some information and it's an information exchange. I'm giving you information. You get to see where I've thrown the ball. I have an idea what I want to do with it now. But you're started to give me information two and two. What are you swinging at? What are you not swinging at? Utley to his left. Throws out Frazier, and after the leadoff walk, Anderson settles down. As he retires to the Dodger dugout, will go to the fifth, and he's got a six to nothing lead to work with. Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com and buy DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Use promo code BLUECREW for free entry. It is uh, Bark in the Park tonight. A couple of hot dogs. Justin Turner stepping in. Oh, come on. Give me a little. <laughs> Jeez. Turner one for two and a run scored as we begin the fifth inning. And he skies it at a short right. Slicing foul. Watch where you walk tonight. Dog day afternoon into evening. Van Slyke and Utley to follow. After tonight, 37 games remain. Dodgers and Reds will wrap it up tomorrow. Dodgers have beaten the Reds four out of five this season. They were four and three against Cincinnati last year. One and one to Justin Turner. At the moment, 305. 15 home runs, 51 runs batted in. Outfield straight away. Two and one. Dodgers will get home tomorrow night. Time for a late dinner. Frazier will throw out Turner for the first out of the fifth. Now Van Slyke, who was 0 for 15 coming into the game, he singled to center in the second inning. And then this, a home run to center, 392 feet. 
It was his fifth of the year and his first in a couple of months. Dodgers would hit three home runs in the fourth. Van Slyke a solo shot. Ellis a two run home run and Puig a two run home run. That would chase David Holmberg. Villarreal on in relief. So Van Slyke getting the start tonight with Holmberg a lefty. So the Crawford and Ethier are on the bench along with Peterson, Grandall, and Guerrero. With the score five, six, well, it was six to nothing, a five to one last night. Dodgers didn't get ahead five to one until the sixth inning last night in that Jimmy Rollins home run. It felt like at times the Reds were kind of hanging around. They ended up having that bases loaded situation. Got the big strikeout of Jay Bruce. Van Slyke down on strikes. First strikeout for Villarreal, and it's the second out of the fifth. This one tonight, maybe not this inning, but they've got a chance to really put them away. This one on the corner to Scott. Excellent pitcher's pitch. At the knees, and there's two out. Utley has popped out, walked, and came around to score on the A.J. Ellis home run. Fourth time this season, the Dodgers have hit three home runs in an inning. And a strike, nothing in one to chase Utley. Frankly, this is the kind of a team that the Dodgers should be beating. The Reds are 20 games under 500. They've been out of the pennant race practically since opening day. 27 and a half games behind the Cardinals. They've had good success against under 500 teams. They've won two out of every three against under 500 teams. They're 50 and 25. It's got to be reverse of that then on the above 500 against winning teams teams with winning records the Dodgers are 18 and 31 last year there were seven games under 500 against teams with winning records and don't look now but the Cubs are coming to town and the Giants right after that good time to turn that record around one and two. And is a foul back and out of play. With the fans that have followed the Dodgers for a long time, that they would know that the Mets beat the Dodgers 10 out of 11 in 1988, the last World Championship. We snuck by them in seven games in the National League playoff. That was a big upset. It was a huge upset. On one and two. Utley is hit by pitch. It's a big upset, but maybe not for the guys in the locker room. I know it wasn't a big upset for Tommy. <laughs> Except his post-game speech. Then it was historic. Just got a piece of the jersey. If you're going to get hit by a pitch, that's the way to do it. Leaves no mark. If you can hit my clothing without hitting my body, that's perfect. It's like going to the tailor. A.J. Ellis, who homered in his last at bat. So A.J. with his fourth home run of the year. And since the 1st of July, Ellis has been very solid at the plate. Outside. Since July 1st, Ellis hitting over 300. All four of his home runs. And 10 of his now 12 RBIs have been hit. Takes I and in, two and one. All right, so, so fess up about 88 and, 
and the Mets. <laughs> and they were, they were, they were really good. They were the favorite team going in, and I don't know what you guys were thinking and feeling, what you were saying internally, externally. You say what? Thinking and feeling like we have to play mistake-free baseball to have a chance. Because as far as talent, they out talent is for sure. Keith Hernandez and Daryl Strawberry and Kevin McReynolds and Gary Carter and just all of them. Just that lineup just kept coming at you. And then you got Dwight Gooden and Ron Darling and Bobby Ojeda. And you got Roger McDowell in the bullpen. And Jesse Orozco was on our side by then. But it was Ellis on two and two. Grounds out. Inning is over. No runs, no hits. Utley hit by a pitch. Nobody left. At the halfway mark after four and a half. Dodgers six to nothing. With three home runs in the fourth inning. Van Slyke, Ellis, and Kui chasing David Holmberg. Next time he sees the Dodgers will be entirely too soon for him, and the Dodgers can't wait to see him again. They knock him out in two plus innings at Dodger Stadium 11 days ago, and they knock him out in three and two thirds innings again tonight. So he's given up six home runs to the Dodgers. Holmberg has. In five and two-thirds innings. The thing I was worried about a little bit with the Dodgers coming in, just them thinking sarcastically around the big leagues. Hitters will say, that guy is good hit. And worried about them being overconfident, but they showed that they could lock in on him. Jay Bruce with the shift on, and there is Utley a couple of steps on the outfield ground. Well, Holmberg retired the Dodgers on 16 pitches in order in the first inning. Then the Dodgers came up with a run and three hits left the bases loaded in the second inning when he gave up 34 pitches. But retire the Dodgers in order in the third, and then Dodgers exploded in the fourth, and he was done. You know, when the pitcher doesn't have the stuff that the hitter respects, you just worry about your lineup over swinging, and then you're in a ballpark that gives up the home run. So another reason to maybe come out of your game, but they did a nice job of uh, not hitting too many pop-ups and not hitting too many fly balls that didn't go out of here. They, they barreled up the ball very well. De Jesus, the strikeout victim in his first at bat, and it's one and one. In uh, Anderson's last start, the Dodgers were no hit. So from the ridiculous to the sublime. Mr. Fires on fireworks night was all going the wrong way. Pitcher of the week, Mike Fires. Then again, who else? De Jesus, four home runs and 16 runs batted in. Outside.
6-0 lead and doing a little better job this inning of commanding the ball and throwing strikes. Ooh, just barely didn't make it back there with that little backdoor slider. Three and two with one out and nobody on. Anderson went four and two with an ERA of under two and a half in nine starts from the middle of June until August the 5th. But in his last three starts, including being no hit by the Astros. Anderson one and two in a 6.9 ERA, but tonight he has righted his ship to this point. Ground ball up the middle, backhanded by Utley. He's got time. DeJesus is retired two out. Now Brian Pena coming up. Dodgers two and a half in front of the Giants, six and a half in front of Arizona, seven and a half in front of the Padres, who are putting the wood to Washington tonight. Five to one at Nationals Park. So while Washington is losing, the Mets are shutting out the Phillies in the bottom of the fifth, three to nothing. If those scores hold up, the Mets will have a six and a half game lead on the Nationals, who on the on opening day had won the World Series. Yeah, on paper. And it just hasn't worked out for them at all. And the Mets, they went out and started looking for some offense. And that team has completely turned around. Gonzalez will take it by himself. Beats Pena the catcher to first, and that's that. Six straight, retired by Fred Anderson. Fernandez, Anderson. In the box. For a limited time, try the new Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack with melted garlic herb butter. And buy your Southern California Kia dealers. Visit MySoCalKia.com to learn more. It'll be Kike Hernandez, Brett Anderson, and Jimmy Rollins to bat in the sixth inning. Dodgers with a run in the second and five in the fourth. Reds with two hits in the second inning and one walk, and that's that. Turner with a home run last night, one for three tonight, sitting next to Yasmani Grandal, who's slated to start tomorrow. That left shoulder is finally beginning to come around. Tried to play through it. A difficulty hitting as much as anything. Took a couple of foul tips off the left shoulder. The cumulative effect really caused him great discomfort. And it was wise to sit her down for a few days. 
Kike Hernandez, two for two, takes a strike. It's nothing and one. So Hernandez continues his hot heading. Making his 12th start in center field. How about those shots Yasmani took off the mask, too? No. Oh. He was Sit on that seven day concussion, concussion deal. deal. Yeah. And then after that, he came back and was still took a couple more. But what a year he has had. A broken back grounder to short. Look at that. The bat goes through the legs. The ball goes through the legs. And Hernandez will slide into second base. Either that's the prettiest double of the year or the ugliest. Well, heads up at short and then heads up by Kike Hernandez in the way he ran. He's running straight to first base to try and beat it out because he knows he gets jammed. He doesn't really watch the fact that the bat's going to get in the way. But then when he gets to first base, he makes a solid turn. Look at that. Suarez has to get out of the way. Very rarely does the bat beat the ball anywhere on the field. But Kike did a great job because the left fielder, De Jesus Jr., is assuming their shortstop's going to get it. So he's just kind of sitting back there in left field. And when it finally gets through, there is a lot of distance between junior and the ball and Hernandez is three for three and his 12th double of the year with a giant asterisk now here's Brett Anderson who attempted to punt twice and hasn't worked out too well Anderson with nine sacrifices. So Kike Hernandez with a bat and ball trick. He's going to run really hard out of the box, and you see right about here, he starts to cut it up around the bag. He notices the left fielder as he comes towards first base, how far away that ball is. Nothing in one to Anderson. No balls and two strikes. It's a little different situation for Brett right here. Because the third baseman can't charge as much Todd Frazier because you charge early Kike Hernandez will just steal third. So he's got a little more room to bunt the ball to third base. Oh and two to Anderson. And doesn't work out too well this time either. I'd like to see Brett stand a little closer to the plate when he's trying to bunt. I always tried to get right on top of it. Because there's only one place to move when you get right on top of it. You never have to be leaning in to cover the outside corner. So you're never in that, I can't lean in yet because I haven't read the ball. Because there's only, when you're so close to the plate, you cover the outside corner with the bat. The only place you have to move if you need to get out of the way is backwards. You're never leaning in and lose your balance. A frustrated Brett Anderson. Not happy with his helmet or his gloves. Rollins one for three and a run scored. Lines one on one hop to first base. Votto will take it unassisted. And Hernandez will go to third. So I was snooping around today and I was curious about broken backs. Mm -hmm. What do you think a bat costs these days? Oh my gosh. It depends on the make and the wood right. and all of that. It's somewhere between sixty and a hundred bucks. A bat. I was going to say two hundred dollars. I, I know of some custom-made bats at the big league level with the real, you know. You yeah, see old Quig coming up. So when they break a bat, it's a, a costly proposition. Well, they'll buy them in bulk, and basically. Doing the numbers, a foul off to the right. Nothing in one. They'll use maybe three, four bats in a week, depending on mm -hmm. whether you're lucky or not, or whether the wood is good. At this level, the wood's all good. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes you just hit it on the wrong spot. And in the case of Kike Hernandez, he got himself an $85 double. Hard ground ball to third. Frazier is there, and that's going to end the inning. 
No runs in the broken bat double for Hernandez after five and a half. Dodgers six nothing. For the Reds as we make our way to the bottom of the sixth inning about 180 miles from here about two and a half hours stands Bowling Green State University and our very own Oral Hershiser was the Falcon probably his best outing look at those glasses probably his best outing as a Falcon May 7th 1979 through a no hitter at Kent State went 0-1 as a sophomore 6-2 and as a junior had a very nice big league career Bulldog six shades they must have carded you Oh, yeah. Rollins behind second base. Out at first base. Villarreal hitting for himself in the 6 nothing game. Robbed of a hit by Jimmy Rollins. That's your defense with only 54 errors on the year. The second best as far as error total in all the big leagues behind the Baltimore Orioles. And one of the main reasons this defense has been stellar all year. Jimmy Rollins, his glove has been steady and spectacular. So one out and nobody on. And Jason Bourgeois coming up. The Reds thinking about a replay and they say, yeah. Uh, it's six nothing. Bourgeois has bounced to third and bounced to short. It's been that kind of year for Brian Price. Six runs, eight hit for the Dodgers. No runs and two hits for the Reds. Look at you, the Hall of Famer. Uh, wearing, you know what you were? You were wearing Larry King's glasses. Those glasses were the ones that went gray Kike Hernandez two out when they were in the sun the pictures taken in the sun and they they changed it was yeah, those man. bad that's a bad bad look Houston hello <laughs> those glasses wow so you're at Bowling Green yeah and at that point you had a dream perhaps of playing in the major leagues how how realistic was that dream then I just wanted to make that team and I was cut my freshman year got very few innings that sophomore year I felt like I was cut and uh, Junior year came out of the gym because the weather's so bad there We go down to the Florida trip and started to to pitch a little better I grew three inches and gained 20 pounds my sophomore summer. So all of a sudden I came back a bigger person and uh, All of a sudden the velocity went up a little bit went up to about 86 87 miles an hour That's where I was drafted at that velocity, but had a pretty good curveball Hey, anybody can grow 20 pounds. It's a three inches. It's interesting. My dad was part owner of a company, and the scouts actually wrote on my scouting report. Comes from a pretty good family, not going to be very competitive. <laughs> Rollins throws out Suarez, and that ends the inning. Another good one for Fred Anderson. So the Dodgers are cruising along tonight with a six to nothing lead.
as we head to the seventh. Three home runs in the fourth inning are Arco top tier plays. For Scott Van Slyke, broke an 0 for 15 slump. After an ugly walk, A.J. Ellis hit one out. For Ellis, 412 feet. And Yasiel Quig hit one out as well. So a three home run inning for the Dodgers in the fourth. And that is the Arco top tier play, or those were the Arco top tier plays of the ball game. So the Dodgers sitting pretty. They scored one in the second, five in the fourth. And you got a sense that by the time Ellis hit that second home run, the Reds' balloon had been completely deflated. Meanwhile, Anderson is cruising along. He has struck out four, walked one. Adrian Gonzalez leading it off, takes a strike, nothing in one. Talk about Brett Anderson cruising along in his last outing. He had the no hitter thrown against him. Other than the second inning, he's throwing a no hitter. Gave up the singles to Frazier and Bruce, pitched around that with a strikeout. And only one walk after that. Well, he has been outstanding. 72 pitches for Anderson through six. So uh, he's averaging a dozen pitches in it. He's been the Dodger Road Warrior this year. 12th start here on the road this year. He's four and four with a 295 on the road. That includes getting a no hitter thrown against you. Oh and two and Gonzalez takes low and really has been a victim of uh, poor run support in a lot of his starts. And he's got a chance to even his record here to go eight and eight tonight. On one and two. In about an hour and 15 minutes, the uh, Giants and Cubs at AT&T Park, Kyle Hendricks and Jake Peavy. The Giants are done with their batting practice. They're in their clubhouse, no doubt, watching this game and realizing the task in front of them tonight. Gonzalez on one and two. Two balls, two strikes. I was on the Giants team. I'd be thinking about trying to catch the Dodgers, but secondly, stay close enough to make the seven games against them head to head meaningful. Into short left center field. The Jesus, that's the first out of the seven. And if you're a Dodger, you want to extend that lead as much as possible before you play those Giants after the Cubs in this upcoming homestand. 
Well, tomorrow morning it'll be Granky and De Sclafani. Then over the weekend, 7-10 at Dodger Stadium. Friday, Jason Hamill and Clayton Kershaw. Saturday, John Lester and Matt Latos. Sunday, Arietta and Wood. And a pop foul behind the plate and Pena. Two gone. And then next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the Dodgers and the Giants for three. Of course, whenever you come out to a Dodger game, there's a good chance of seeing some fireworks. But you get a little more bang for the buck on Fridays because Denny's presents Friday Night Fireworks. Come out on Friday and take your place on the field for a fireworks show featuring a musical mix of songs all about the summer. For more information, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. Two out, nobody on. Spans like two for three, including a home run. Takes a breaking ball for a strike. It's nothing in one. Ain't no cure for the summertime blues. Hot town summer in the city. Here's the 0-1. One ball, one strike. Chase Utley on deck, Dodgers 6 zip. Lined into the glove of Suarez, well hit by Van Slyke, but has nothing to show for his efforts. Nothing across for the Dodgers, seventh inning stretch. Dodgers 6 nothing. Park in the park night at uh, the Great American Ballpark. And the Dodgers have taken a bite out of the Reds, six to nothing. Joey Votto, who's been struck out twice tonight, by Brett Anderson leading it off. Anderson, to this point, pitching probably his best game of the season. As Votto grounds innocently to Utley, that's the first out of the seven. <laughs> Fred Anderson, when right, gets ground balls. And tonight, he's been right. And the Dodgers. The infield defense has been best in Major League Baseball. And they overall, the Dodger defense, 54 errors on the season. Best in the National League. 
Well, the double plays are down because Zach Greinke and Clayton Kershaw strike out so many players. So number of double plays not a big deal, but that fielding percentage, that's a huge deal. Getting the outs you're supposed to get. Well, and, and that's one of those interesting stats. A given team may lead the league in double plays. That doesn't necessarily mean much of anything because that oftentimes will reflect a pitching staff that puts a lot of guys on. Exactly. A pitching just, staff that walks a lot of guys, pitching staff that just had pitches in a lot of traffic. Phillips is 0 for 2. And Anderson with the comebacker. Fred Anderson has been economical and methodical tonight. And the pitch count is down there at 76. Six times this year he's taken the pitch count over 100 and that fielding your position will definitely keep your pitch count down. Talk about getting the outs that you're supposed to get. That includes yourself as the eighth fielder in front of the hitter. So now two out. And Todd Frazier who has one of the two Cincinnati hits tonight takes a strike. Anderson into the wine. Frazier. Off speed pitch way out in front. And there's nothing in two. Jay Bruce on deck. Foul ball. Anderson pitching a two hitter. Four strikeouts, one walk, and two outfield flies. Alex Wood, another lefty on this staff last night, five and two thirds, only four hits. And he's being one up by his peer, Brett Anderson. And even more importantly, Wood last night, Anderson tonight, coming off the rare occurrence. Cranky and Kershaw lose consecutive games. Would you say is the third time that the combo has started in a series that the, the Dodgers have been swept? Yep. Third time, and there are 59 such series. When the bottom half of the rotation does well, it sets the Dodgers up for very much a, a hot streak. As you've got Cranky and Kershaw on their way, coming close. And then when they lose, it sets them up for a cold streak, but these guys have come to the rescue. Kershaw will go Saturday, or actually Friday, against Jason Hamill. And a two out single to center for Frazier. They have three hits tonight, the Reds. And a somewhat derisive cheer from the announced crowd of 17,712. What was that word you used? I went to Bowling Green. Derisive. Derisive. That's that was my SAT scores were a little lower than derisive. <laughs> yes, but you had the Larry King glass. That, that made up for it, so it's okay. I'll fake them out. <laughs> so two out. Frazier at first and Jay Bruce coming up. A broken bat bleeder into short right and Utley can't hang on to it. He was there and he clanked it. Chase got a great jump. He ran a very good route. Breaking back on this like an outfielder and just goes back real well. And right there he just hits the heel of his glove. First times he's gone back there where he wasn't quite sure if Yasiel was coming. Uh, 
Well, it goes as an error. Watch out. So De Jesus breaks his bat. He'll get a new one. Incoming. A shot into the Reds dugout so quick. I'm not sure you can get incoming out. Smiles over there, so nobody got hit. That's John Lamb pitched last night. So Todd Frazier at third base is the first runner in scoring position for the Reds tonight. Frazier at third, Bruce is at first, two out. Anderson's shut out in jeopardy. DeJesus 0 for 2. Anderson misses outside. It's 1 and 1. Eighty five pitches to this point for Anderson. In the hole in the left field for a base hit. Frazier comes in to score. The Jesus with the RBI. The Dodger lead has been cut to six to one. Balls up a little bit. Check where AJ's glove starts and then rises up to catch it. Jesus stays on top of it. You're wanting to get ground balls, and that's one, but I used to judge it by how many hops it took to get through, and that one only took two, so it was hit pretty hard. Dodgers now have bullpen activity as Rick Honeycutt goes out to talk with Brett Anderson. Slight delay, and one of the longer innings Brett has had, so go out there and give him a Will break as far as the cardiovascular side of it. Give him a blow and get him refocused. Jim Johnson is warming up in the Dodger bullpen. There he is. Getting some instruction from Chuck Krim. So Anderson, who kept the Reds at bay until here in the seventh inning. Two out, nobody on. Frazier a single. Bruce Bloop one into and out of the glove of Chase Utley and DeJesus with the single to left. In the dirt, Ellis can't find it. Runners at second and third. Now the Dodgers better take a big gulp of air, take a deep breath, and get themselves back together here. AJ blocked a couple balls last night and wanted bat that kept a double play in order this one he will be kicking himself that one gets away and all of a sudden now a routine signal single makes this a game again that's one he will tell you post game that he should have had Brian Pena 0 for 2 takes low and outside two balls and no strikes Anderson out of the full wine. Two and one with two out. Pena switch hitter. Two and two. Brian Pena as a left handed hitter. 299, but batting for the right side, just 215. Has not hit a home run this year. Almost hit one last night from the left side. Hooked foul at the last instant. Here's the 2 2. Now it's 3 and 2. Fred Anderson made a nice pitch, 2 and 0, to get to 2 and 1. The last two, he got a gift from Pena. On a swing on a ball and then that one back at the same place that time taken. Up through the middle into center field for a base hit and two runs will score. Bruce is in to Jesus is in. Pena knocks in two. It is now a ball game again. The Dodgers six and the Reds three. We 
showed the defensive graphic and then all of a sudden the Dodgers. 55th error of the season has come back to bite them to make these runs unearned. Trying to battle back into the count three and two Pena gets jammed but finds a hole. Between the, the runners advancing with the ball getting away from AJ Ellis and a couple of two out hits. The Reds have climbed back in this one. Mattingly coming out he's going to make a double switch his first stop with his home plate umpire Jeff Nelson. And then he will come and he will get. Brett Anderson. Andre Ethier will take over in left field. For Van Slyke. And suddenly. Cincinnati is within shouting distance. We're going to take a break to out bottom of the seventh. Dodgers six Reds three. You by Flex Alert. This summer, the power is in your hands. FlexAlert.org. And by the Acura It's That Kind of Summer event. Well, here's Jim Johnson making his 58th appearance of the year. And for the Dodgers, his ninth. His Dodger ERA is 21. Lamar is pinch hitting. Ryan Lamar. With Pena at first base. Three in in the bottom of the seventh. And Johnson delivers a strike. One ball and one strike. Johnson's last outing in Oakland on Wednesday. Two earned runs, two hits, and a third of an inning. Fouled off to the right. And it's one and two to Ryan Lamar. Well, the Dodgers are skipping along merrily until two out, nobody on in the bottom of the seventh. Four Reds in a row get on base. An error by Chase Utley. And Lamar fouls it off to the right. Bard called up last week right after Marlon Bird was traded to the Giants. He's hitting 257. Eight home runs, 18 runs batted in in Louisville. Now the 1 2 outside. Two balls, two strikes. Jason Bourgeois is on deck. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Three and two. 
Johnson running a deep count right here. He's got to trust his stuff. He's throwing 93 94 with a nice little tail. He's used to heavier sink. He's got enough. He's located. Here goes the runner. Here comes the pitch. It is fouled off to the right and out of play. Brian Pena will return to first. Lamar will see another pitch. Lamar is going to see a fastball, a two seamer. I think they will risk a 3 2 breaking ball and put the tying run at the plate with a walk. Strength against strength, pretty much. You know what you're going to get. Lamar, catcher's speed, short lead. Here's the pitch. Call strike three, and that's going to do it. So Johnson comes in, works the count full, and Lamar. Takes a call, third strike. Johnson and the Dodgers can breathe a sigh of relief. As we head to the eighth, Dodgers six and the Reds three. Summary: Brett Anderson goes six and two thirds, gave up three runs, none of them earned. The Dodgers hit three home runs in the fourth inning: a solo blast for Van Slyke and two run shots for A.J. Ellis and Yasiel Puig. So the Dodgers have a three run lead as we head to the eighth. Alex Wood, Yasiel Puig doing the Macarena. They haven't done that in 10 years. It's back. How old were they when it was being done? That's a good question. <laughs> they weren't legal. Well, here's Jumbo Diaz, whose nickname is for apparent reasons. Diaz, the big heart throwing right hander, his 44th appearance at ERA, about four and a half. He's the third Reds pitcher of the night. Via Real went three and a third, gave up just one hit. He did a great job in keeping the Reds in the game. Brett Anderson, six and two thirds tonight. While it said three runs given up, none of them were earned. Gave up five hits, struck out four, and walked one. Chase Utley leading it off. Nobody feels worse than Chase Utley for providing that offense for the Reds and leading off the inning. I'm sure he's got a little vengeance in mind. 0 for 1's been hit by a pitch, walked and scored a run, fouls it off to the left. It's 1 and 1. 97 miles an hour slow right there from Jumbo. He's got a Jumbo fastball. Mark, mm -hmm. Mark tries to be away.
Ellis and Kike Hernandez to follow here in the eighth. Diaz deals and Ellis lays off. Two and one. I say Ellis Utley. Ellis on deck. Utley has two hits with the Dodgers. Both are doubles. His error would prolong the bottom of the seventh. And the Reds would end up scoring three. And there's a little vengeance. A line drive single to center. And it gets past Bourgeois. Going to second base is Utley. And he slides in. So probably a hit and an error. Hey, suddenly coming off the DL, then being traded to the Dodgers, of swinging a very hot bat, and this shows it again. That ball is scorched. Look at him out of the box, checking the way he's been running since he's been a Dodger, and he looks very smooth, not favoring anything. Makes a nice turn and slides confidently into second. So it goes as a hit and an error, and here's Ellis swinging and missing, and it's nothing and one. AJ has walked, hit a home run over the wall in center, his fourth of the year, and he's bounced to short. Now, if Ellis can get the ball over to the right side, get up to third. No balls and two strikes. It's a big mistake for a big league center fielder. Ball hit that hard. All you have to do is knock it down like a second baseman. You're going to have plenty of time to get the ball in. Ball hit that hard. Chase Utley was only about 20, 30 feet out of the box. Ellis takes call strike three. Slider at 87. First out of the eight. Watch every out of market game live or on demand at True HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB.TV Premium. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and more. Every night on every device, blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Now Kike Hernandez, three for three, swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. Hernandez in his last at-bat. In the scorebook, it says he doubled the left. The bat shattered, and the head of the bat beat the ball to shortstop a Eugenio Suarez, who had to jump out of the way of the head of the bat just as the ball was coming at him. Hard to pin the wrap on Suarez for that. Hernandez says, thank you very much. He's three for three and has lifted his average to 306. 12th start in center field for the Dodgers. On 0 and 2. This was the last at bat for Hernandez. Watch out. The bat zigged and the ball zagged. On 1 and 2. To short. Utley will go to third. Hernandez is out at first. And because of the double switch, Andre Ethier is coming up his first at bat of the night. The ground ball sure was a little easier for Suarez to field. <laughs> Didn't have to deal with the bat. Kike's going to have to work on that other one, breaking it, getting it in the way. They always tell you keep your eye on the ball, not the bat and the ball. So two out. Let's see what Ethier can do with Utley at third. Andre, a very solid year. Diaz delivers a strike, and it's nothing in one. Players don't have nicknames. Anymore. Jumbo Diaz has a nickname. Aptly named. There are other through history that have had aptly nicknamed players. George Selkirk was known as Twinkle Toes <laughs> because he was quick on his feet. 
Perhaps the most apt nickname in baseball history was Mordecai Browns. Three fingers. Because he had three fingers. And talk about making the most of it. The, f <laughs> the four seamer was a little tough with the three <laughs> fingers, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to go someplace with like three outs. And Mordecai, three fingers, Brown. Fortunately, the four seamers thrown with two fingers. Two balls and two strikes to Andre Ethier. <laughs> We're two out in the bottom top half of the eighth. Dodgers six to three. Giants get underway in about 45 minutes. And the 2 2. Astros won today, and the Angels are getting shut out in the eighth inning in Detroit, 5 to nothing. Angels in danger falling six back. Two and two to Ethier, and here comes the pitch. Three and two. That was quite a pitch by Jumbo right there, and that ball tailed back. Looked like Andre might have got a call. Utley at third. Diaz on three and two to Ethier. Foul tipped it. Nats have moved to within one of the Padres in the bottom of the seventh. San Diego six, Washington five. Mets are beating up on the Phillies six to nothing in the eighth inning. And here the Dodgers lead six to three, and after the game tonight, 37 games left. Three and two. Ethier. Oh, a diving stop by. Brandon Phillips. He's won four gold gloves, and there's a reason for that. Robbing Ethier of a hit, costing the Dodgers a run, and we will go to the bottom of the eighth. Brandon Phillips, a spectacular diving catch. After seven and a half, Dodgers six, and the Reds three. Well, there may be 400 television sets in New York on this day in 1939. And of those 400, who knows how many were watching. But it was one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And boy, have we ever come a long way. Jason Bourgeois is leading it off in the bottom half of the eighth inning. 
Bourgeois is 0 for 3. Eugenio Suarez and Joey Votto will follow. Johnson deals and a chopper off the glove of Turner. This is going to be trouble. And Bourgeois with great speed will go to second base. So two of the weirdest looking doubles tonight. Turner jumped as high as he could and he was about two inches too short. The official chopper looked like it was off the plate. Justin may be just not a step back fast enough, but I'll tell you what, got some ups. He's not going to get him anyway. Would have saved an extra 90 feet if he could have leathered it. So the Reds are open for business in the bottom of the eighth. Eugenio Suarez steps in. Suarez 0 for 2 and a walk. Dodgers were cruising right along six to nothing with two out nobody on in the bottom of the seventh. The Reds would score three unearned runs. Three hits and an error. And if Suarez gets aboard, Votto is the tying run at the plate. The 0 1 is inside. One ball and one strike. Suarez hit a home run last week against the Dodgers. He's got nine of them on the year. So Johnson trying to get out of this difficulty. Missing outside. And it's two and one. Three run lead still, and you got to pound the strike zone. No free passes. Feels like you want to aim for the corners because you've got a runner in scoring position, but the key is keeping the tying run from coming to the plate. Two balls and two strikes to Suarez took a good rip. There are points in the game where you just go strength against strength. Jim Johnson did it right there. The bottom fell out of that ball, even though it was just above the knees. That was a great action. Two and two. The pitch to Suarez. We'll do it again. It's a bad break when the ball gets chopped over your third baseman, but you can't go to overthrowing. You overthrow a two seam fastball has a tendency to straighten out. You don't want to throw it through the break. You want to get on top of it and get that spin working downward. Two and two to Suarez, a 300 hitter. And uh, Johnson steps off the rubber. Bourgeois has got great speed at second. And a ground ball to third. Turner short hops it, throws him out. Bourgeois can't go anywhere. So on the 76th anniversary of the first ever televised game between the Dodgers and the Reds, we have come a long way, baby. This is what it looks like down in the truck doing our game tonight here in Cincinnati. What's fascinating is that the first ever night game was played between the Dodgers and the Reds. The first ever televised game between the Dodgers and the Reds. And Jim Johnson's night is done. And uh, we're going to take a break with J.P. Howell coming in. He'll be facing Joey Votto and the Dodgers leading at 6-3 to three with one out in the bottom half of the eighth.
tweet your photo with the hashtag SNLA Data Strong Fan for a chance to be shown in an upcoming telecast. Brought to you by T Mobile. I'm guessing Daniel P did not tweet that one himself. Joey Votto. 0 for 3 tonight. Takes low and outside. One ball, no strikes from JP Howell. If Votto gets on, tying run comes to the plate. One out, one on, bottom of the eighth. Dodgers 6 to 3. JP Howell kept his pitch count in order last night, ending in a third, 23 pitches. Rest. No runs in a hit. Feels good enough tonight. He better because this is a very big situation to continue to break the losing streak and get on the winning ways for the Dodgers. This is a game they feel like they should win and they should win if the bullpen can do their job. In all likelihood, this is the only batter that he will face. You got Phillips, Frazier, and then Bruce. Avilon, the lefty, warming up in the Dodger bullpen along with Juan Nicasio. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Two balls and a strike. Votto, 24 home runs and 62 runs batted in. A 448 on base percentage. His 24 home runs ranks him seventh in the league. 132 hits. He ranks 10th. Two and one with one out. Just high. Howell not happy with the call from home plate umpire Jeff Nelson. This ball might have caught the top of the strike zone. He could breathe a sigh of relief. Joey Votto, the active leader in the 2 1 count, the 494 batting average and 26 home runs. Now you got to face him with a 3 1 count. Three and one to Votto. He walks. For the major league leading 107th time this year. The tying run coming to the plate in Brandon Phillips. And Mattingly is going to come and get how. Came in to get Votto. Unable to do it. Brandon Phillips is coming up and presumably Juan Nicasio is coming in when we come back. for J.P. Howell's Bay Area homecoming. Plus, Oral is presented as missing Silver Slugger Award. Don't miss backstage Dodgers tomorrow at 7 o'clock right here on Sportsnet LA. Where'd it go? I'm not going to blow the surprise. You're going to have to watch the episode, Charlie. I'll be busy. 
I'll tell you then after it airs. Flying. After it airs, I'll tell you. I can't oh. give away the secret. That was the tease. If I give it away, the tease is gone. Well, I, I look at it another way. You will entice hundreds of thousands, millions of potential viewers. We have come a long way since that first television broadcast. When Red was talking to himself. <laughs> but you know what was fascinating about the Reds and the Dodgers? And again, the first ever telecast. These two teams, first ever night game at Evans Field. Johnny Vandermeer's second no-hitter was that night. The first ever professional baseball team came here out of Cincinnati in 1869, the Red Stockings. And in the first ever professional baseball game, they beat a team named the Great Westerns 45 to 9. Pitcher's duel. Well, let's get out of this jam. Brandon Phillips, two on and two out, six to three. Nicasio set at the belt. Lined into center field for a base hit. Bourgeois will score. Hernandez slips and falls. Votto holds at second. It's now six to four. Nicasio greeted rudely. Brandon Phillips, notorious fastball hitter, first pitch hitter, looking to go deep. It's a line drive base hit, keeps the rally going for the Reds. Now 6 4. This ball is center cut. And Phillips does what you do with it best. The Dodgers should hope to be glad that that ball's still in the ballpark. Kike, a little angle to his route, trying to get the throw into the infield quickly, got on the side of his left foot, slipped. Now here's Todd Frazier. The home run derby champion with 29 home runs. He's the lead run at the plate. He swings and misses and it's nothing in one. Frazier two for three tonight. Dodgers led six to nothing with two out and nobody on in the seventh. Now they're up against the ropes and getting pumped. Trying to get out of the eighth round. Jay Bruce on deck. Here's the 0-1. Nothing and two. Avilon with a big strike out of Jay Bruce in the eighth with bases loaded two out. That could end up happening again here tonight where he could face him for sure. This is probably Nicasio's only hitter. Maybe he rolls a pair and Avilon doesn't have to come in, but I got to believe Avilon's going to face Bruce no matter what. No balls, two strikes. Nicasio to Frazier. One ball, two strikes. I wish you'd have gone back to your boxing days right there, Charlie, and said, down goes Frazier. I think that line's been used. It has been. One of the great calls of all time. Mm -hmm. Howard Coates. One and two. Six four Dodgers. Frazier fouls it back just to our left. Freak leadoff double by Bourgeois. Tipped off the very tip of the glove of Justin Turner. Then it rolled down along the, the sidewall. So it was a double. Suarez bounced to third. Votto would walk after Howell had come in. Phillips, the first pitch he sees from Nicasio, lines a single to center. And a six nothing lead has now been cut to six to four. Frazier 265. And the one two from Juan Nicasio taking too much time. So time is called. Frazier 29 home runs, 75 runs batted in. Frazier out of Tom's Rivers, New Jersey. 
He was on a Little League World Series champion. Nicasio on one and two. Swung on and missed strike three. Foul tipped into the glove of A.J. Ellis. That's a second out of the eighth inning. A.J. wanted the ball up. Nicasio went right after him. The ball ended up staying down. You see where the glove is, but then it moves down there and gets the foul tip. Great job by A.J. Ellis holding on to that ball. Now two out. Nicasio, who's never had much success against left-handed batters. Carl Crawford is going to go out. He's going to replace Ethier. Avilon, who faced Bruce last night with the bases loaded, will face Bruce with two on and two out of the bottom of the eighth. And the Dodgers nursing a 6-4 lead. We'll be right back. Savilon is about to make his 58th appearance, a 398 ERA. Last night, with the bases loaded and two out, facing Jay Bruce. Got him on that big sweeping breaking ball. And here he comes tonight with two on and two out in the bottom half of the eighth. Dodger lead is six to four, including last night in the strikeout. Jay Bruce 0 for 4 in his career against Avilon. Avilon in five and a third innings with the Dodgers. Seven strikeouts and four walks. It was a huge punch out last night. Bruce with 18 home runs, 69 runs batted in. Bruce a 233 hitter, about the same against ref, uh, righties or lefty pitching. Votto's at second, Phillips is at first. 6 4 Dodgers. Inside and low, one ball and no strikes to Jesus on deck. A little cat and mouse game between Avilon and AJ Ellis and Bruce. They they know what they got him out on last night with the slider away. Do you go with the same sequence? Do you start up with the breaking ball? They start up with the fastball in, thinking he might be sitting on the breaking ball. Nothing doing in the Dodger bullpen. One ball, no strikes. One ball and one strike at 93. Jay Bruce tonight is single to center, bounced to second, and blooped one into short right that clanked off the glove of Chase Utley. That would extend the seventh inning and allow the Reds to score three. They have scored one here in the bottom of the eighth. A six nothing lead is now six to four. Two on and two out. Line to right and foul. One and two. All the information tells you to throw a breaking ball low and away right here. 
head of the fastball. Pitched him in. Swung and missed that last night. Outfield is deep and straight away. Gonzalez, maybe five feet off the line, his heels on the outfield grass. Two on, two out. Six four Dodgers. The one two. Swung on and missed strike three for the second time in 24 hours in a key situation. Luis Avilon strikes out Jay Bruce. Avilon and the Dodgers can breathe a sigh of relief. Last night, a breaking ball down and away. Tonight, a fastball up and in. We go to the ninth. Dodgers six, Reds four. in the bottom of the seventh red scored three in the seventh one in the eighth and with two on and two out Luis Avilon for the second time in as many games in practically the same situation strikes out Jay Bruce last night a sweeping breaking ball down and away to the left handed hitting Texan and tonight it was a fast ball up and in and we'll go to the ninth and Avilon comes in and gets the job done. Did a great, great job, especially with that fastball up and in. One and two count, take a shot in there. The only thing you worry about is you don't want to leave it out over the plate and you don't want to hit him, but he hit his spot perfectly. Yeah, breathing a sigh of relief, all right, as Luis Avilon gets the job done. So we'll go to the ninth at the top of the order. It'll be Rollins and Puig and Gonzalez. Baden Hop is the fourth Reds pitcher of the night. David Holmberg did not last long. But the Red bullpen, Villarreal and Diaz have shut down the Dodgers, who scored a run in the second inning and five in the fourth and nothing since. Rollins takes a strike. Jimmy 0 for 4 got a board on a fielder's choice and scored a run. Five of the six runs for the Dodgers in the fourth on home runs. Rollins at 223. 0 oh and 2. One ball and two strikes. Mets lead the Phillies seven to four in the ninth inning in Philadelphia. Padres lead the Nationals six to five in the ninth inning in Washington. One and two to Rollins. Two balls and two strikes.
Back with you tomorrow morning. First pitch about 935 Pacific. Zach Granke and Anthony DeSclafani. The 2-2. Two -two. In the short left, an easy play for DeJesus. So one gone in the ninth. Giants getting underway in about 10 minutes, and so Dodgers, while two and a half up, three in the loss column. Arizona, San Diego hanging on for dear life, and Colorado's been overboard for a long time. Week takes low and outside, one ball, no strikes. Troy Tillowitzki's having a better time up there in Toronto. <laughs> from Colorado up there into a Blue Jays are leading the Rangers tonight five to two in the sixth. So it looks like the way things are going is going to be a battle of Texas in the American League West. Houston won today beat the Yankees in the Bronx. Quake fouls it back. Rangers have really turned it around. Ooh. First half of the season, they looked like they were going to take on a lot of water. But they hung tough. Mm -hmm. the pitching started to get healthy. Beltre and Prince Fielder having great ears. So Puig takes a walk. Tigers behind Verlander shut out the Angels tonight, five to nothing. And so the Angels have fallen six behind Houston as Gonzalez steps in. Adrian is 0 for 4. Takes high and outside. One ball, no strikes. Arizona has a 1 to nothing lead. Playing in the second inning against the Cardinals. Pirates win again. Cubs and Giants in less than 10 minutes. 6 4 Dodgers, one out in the ninth. Puig back standing up. Puig has three stolen bases. Been caught three times. Pena, good throwing arm. Into left center field for a base hit. Now on his way to third base is Puig. On his way home, he'll make it without a throw. A double for Adrian Gonzalez, his 29th of the year. His 74th RBI. The Dodgers get a big insurance run. They lead 7-4 to four with one out in the ninth. Adrian Gonzalez. Just trying to make a nice smooth swing to left field. You see him close up the front side and take his weight that direction. And then Yasiel Puig sees that ball go in the gap and he can just open it up every gear he's got till right about now. Now you just cruise on home. So Puig scores his 29th run on Gonzalez's 67th RBI. And the Dodgers looking for some more insurances. Justin Turner steps in and he takes a strike. Nothing in one. So the Dodgers get to Baden Hop. The bullpen, after Holmberg was knocked out in the fourth, was terrific. But Baden Hop, one out walk to Puig, and the Gonzalez double to left center. Van Slyke on deck, and Turner takes low.
Turner takes outside. Two and one. Turner single to center in the second. Would score a run. And he has flied out, grounded out, and fouled out. Seven to four Dodgers. Foul back. Dodgers this year, when they score at least four, are 52 and 10. It took Justin Turner his entire career to hit 15 home runs until this year when he's hit 15. Stan Conti, Gasiel Puig, as the hamstring five back in the yours. Two and two. Foul tip. And Turner will. Live to see another pitch. That was a big insurance run. Adrian Gonzalez driving that ball right in the gap. You know, CL showing the discipline to pick up that walk so that Adrian could drive him in. Turner down on strikes. Second out of the ninth. And Van Slyke coming up. And now he is being called back. And Crawford is coming up to hit. Carl, fresh off his weekend homecoming in Houston. Foul tip, and it's nothing in one. Crawford in his last 13 games has been hot. 10 for his last 29, a 345 clip. Been on base, 387 percentage. And in his career against the Reds, 344. Gonzalez at second base. As Crawford. Comes out of his shoes and it's nothing in two. Kenley Jansen warming in the Dodger bullpen. There he is. He'll be in search of his 25th save. He has been ready. You see him looking through the peephole, checking out the game and the pace. He shut it down an out ago and wasn't throwing at all. And then when the second out came, he cranked it up a little bit. But he's just trying to time the final tosses with entering the game. If the Dodgers happen to get the fourth run, go ahead. Maybe Avilon will come back out. Well, you've got DeJesus, a right-handed batter. Pena, a switch hitter. And you've got... Barnhart on the bench. He's a switch hitter. Lamar has already been used. Brennan Bosch out of Harvard Westlake. He's got a bad ankle, left handed hitter. And Schumacher. That's what's on the shelf for Brian Price. Avilon comes in and for the second time in as many nights strikes out Jay Bruce. Last night with the bases loaded and tonight with two on and two out. What was then a two run game and a run in the ninth. The Dodgers now lead it seven to four. And they only took 11 pitches to get his save, 24th save last night. Crawford takes inside. Seven runs, ten hits for the Dodgers. Four runs, seven hits for the Reds. Each side has made an error. Gonzalez, the big double here in the ninth. Plating Puig with an insurance run. The 2-2. Crawford swings and misses, and that is that. 
So we go to the bottom half of the ninth. The Dodgers lead by three, and Kenley Jansen on his way in for, if he could get it done, his 25th save. Eleven pitches, struck out a batter, and tonight in search of his 25th save. He's blown two, an ERA of 2.6. Opponents hitting 177, 61 strikeouts in 34 and two-thirds innings. Yvonne De Jesus singled in a run in the seventh inning when the Reds would score three. He'll be leading it off. And Brian Pena, although he's not out in the on deck circle yet. And they've got Boss Schumacher and Barnhart to deal with. Well, Pena's in the on deck circle now, and here's the first pitch at the bottom of the ninth. Swung on and missed strike one. And he has been almost perfect this year. 24 of 26. Predominantly the cutter, but he has been throwing the slider more this year than in 14. One ball, one strike. Dodgers looking to go 13 games over 500. After tonight, 37 games left in the regular season. Ended their five game losing streak last night, looking at for a two game winning streak tonight. De Jesus fouls it off to the right. It's one and two. And for the second time in as many nights, Luis Avila. Comes in, lefty against lefty. Avalon against Bruce. Struck out Bruce with the bases loaded in the eighth inning last night. And struck out Bruce being the lead run at the plate in the bottom of the eighth tonight. So Avalon gets the job done. Jim Johnson, two thirds of an inning, no runs in a hit. He struck out a batter. Al came in, faced one hitter. That was Votto, and he walked him. Now it's up to Jansen to close the door. On two and two to DeJesus. We'll do it again. Mets are running away from the Phillies. It's nine to four in Philadelphia. You get the win last night, you right the ship after the five game losing streak. You get the win tonight. You start to stabilize the ship. If the Dodgers are going for the sweep tomorrow in the afternoon, a 2 2. You almost rescue the road trip. 
Lost two in Oakland, swept by Houston. The no hitter by Fires. And three of those five losses were of the walk off variety. So they, they weren't just losses, they were painful losses. Jansen on two and two to DeJesus. A third of the way through the ninth. So Kenley Jansen strikes out DeJesus. 11 pitches last night. Love to get the save here. Keep the pitch count down so he'd be available tomorrow afternoon. Kenley Jansen with that fastball gets the first out. Brian Pena coming up and Skip Schumacher in the on deck circle for Cincinnati. Pena tonight, one for three. Switch hitter batting from the left side. Swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. Pena's not hit a home run this year, although he narrowly missed one. Fouling one down the right field line last night. Tailing at the last instant. Jansen muscles up a 94 mile an hour fastball, and it's nothing in two. Pena one for three, knocked in two in the seventh inning. Dodgers seven to four with one out, nobody on in the bottom of the ninth. Oh, and two. Jansen to Pena. Out of play. When Kenley throws at 93 94 with his height and the way he gets down the hill, his drag line is one of the longer ones in the big leagues. For every foot closer you get to the hitter, it's three mile an hour reaction time. So 93 94 feels like 97 98 to these guys through the way Kenley gets down the hill and how big he is. You watch the back foot as he drags this. Throws this ball. Look how close he gets to the plate. Jimmy Rollins behind second base throws out Pena, two gone. And now Skip Schumacher coming up. Schumacher. Had a great year with the Dodgers, a valuable member inside that clubhouse. 213 on the year, playing sparingly in Cincinnati. So Jansen with two out in the ninth. One hopper off the glove of Utley. That was smoked. Schumacher is aboard. I'm sure that'll be scored a hit. Skip Schumacher not looking for a walk. They need base runners, and he just hops on the first straight one. He knows Kenley's going to challenge him. From the high home camera, that looks like somebody. You should get that, but I'll tell you what. Go out there and shag at second base, let somebody hit the ball that hard at you. It is hard to pick up and hard to field. Rule to base hit, and now Jason Bourgeois stepping in. He has doubled in four at bats and scored a run. Dodgers an out away from their 69th win. Bourgeois fouls it back, and it's nothing in one. Cubs hitting in the top of the first in San Francisco. Here's the 0-1. Bourgeois takes low and is blocked by A.J. Ellis. One ball and one strike. Padres lost in Washington. Arizona's got a 1-0 lead playing in the third at home against the Cardinals. Astros one Angels lost. And the 1-1 one, one from Jansen to Bourgeois. One ball and two strikes. Yeah. 
can see Kenley throwing a slider here, not challenging him exactly with his cutter. Yeah, he can get it by him, the cutter, and hit a spot, but not a bad situation here to trick him. Put it in their mind for tomorrow. Schumacher goes, defensive indifference, fouled off to the right and out of play. Kenley Jansen is the sixth Dodger pitcher of the night. Anderson six and two thirds, and Johnson, Hal, Nicasio, Avalon, and Kenley Jansen. Dodgers lead by three. The count is one and two. The pitch to Bourgeois is high. Schumacher goes to second base. Defensive indifference. Suarez with decent power on deck and then Votto. Two out single for Schumacher. Now he's at second with two gone. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Jansen about to throw his 18th pitch here in the ninth. And now he wants to talk to A.J. Ellis. Jansen threw 11 in the ninth inning last night. It's a little philosophical difference right here. This is not about what sign to use of the man on second. This is AJ maybe asking him to do something that he wasn't comfortable with. And maybe AJ telling him the reason why. And then a reassuring pat on the butt. Yep. There's nothing Mattingly could do now. It's up to the big fellas. On two and two. High three balls and two strikes over through a fastball. Sometimes when you're not on the same page as your catcher and then you go to his pitch, you don't have a full commitment to it. Sometimes it's better to throw the one you're committed to than the right one. Suarez with good power on deck. If he gets up, he's a tying run at the plate. Now three and two. Jansen to Bourgeois. Check swing fouls it back. I just caught a break right there. That was ball four. Never easy lately, is it? The higher the value of the game, it seems like the more stress it is in these games at the end. When middle of April, middle of May, no big deal. Oh, it was a little bit of a scare. Now at the end, here comes a 3 2. Jansen to Bourgeois. High and in, ball four. Tying run coming to the plate in a Eugenio Suarez. This is real close. Borderline high, borderline in. Sometimes you don't get the call. Pitch tracks has got it as a strike, maybe. Uh, right off the edge. Strike, maybe. Ball, maybe. It was ball four. Well, it takes a computer to be that close. So Rick Honeycutt. Talking to his battery. This is about attacking Suarez. The guy on deck is the guy you fear the most. And that is Joey Votto. One of the best hitters in the league. Suarez has never faced Jansen before. Suarez tonight over three and a walk. The guy you attack is at the plate. The guy you don't want to come to the plate is on deck. Suarez, nine home runs, 35 runs batted in. Two on, two out in the ninth. There is a strike. Nothing in one. Suarez doing anything he can to get Votto to the plate. Kenley Jansen doing anything he can to not see Votto until tomorrow in the starting lineup. Oh and one. Oh and two. Dodgers have beaten the Reds four out of five this year. They finish off the season series tomorrow. First pitch about 9.35 Pacific. 
Here's the 0-2 to Suarez from Jansen. And the game is over. Fastball outside corner. Jansen with his 25th save. Brent Anderson wins his eighth of the year. The Dodgers improved to 69 and 56. Now with 37 games left in the regular season. And our Lexus player of the game tonight's starter, Brett Anderson, in his 25th start, went six and two thirds, gave up three runs, none of them earned, five hits, four strikeouts, and one walk, improving his record to eight up and 